I'm Dave Farrell. Welcome to MMA Fix here on the Fight Network. On this episode, we have former UFC light heavyweight champion Forrest Griffin joining us via telephone to talk about his upcoming bout with Anderson Silva and the beef Quentin Rampage Jackson has with him since he took his title. Also, we go to Grappler's Quest, whose latest tournament was to benefit autism. Grappler's Quest will be featured next at the UFC 100 Expo. Later, my co-host, ESPN Radio Steve Cofield will join me in studio to recommend our best bet for UFC 98, Machida vs. Evans. Also on this episode, UFC heavyweight Heath Herring takes us on a tour of his home, which is best described as a good place to shoot a porn flick. And finally, the steamy photo shoot with Zion's model Amber Nicole and our very own Andrea Titi that put MMA Fix on the map. And now the latest in MMA news. Greasegate left unresolved. The Nevada State Athletic Commission will take no official action on BJ Penn's complaint regarding George St. Pierre greasing for their bout at UFC 94. And good news for Penn, hopefully he'll be able to move on now that the UFC has officially announced BJ Penn is going to defend his lightweight title against Kenny Florian at UFC 101. Also slated for UFC 101 is Leites versus Sakara. Following an unsuccessful attempt to dethrone Anderson Silva at UFC 97, Talis Leites will replace Rusamar Paul Harris who is out with a fractured tibia, to take on journeyman Alessio Sakara on the preliminary card. UFC 101 will feature co-main event Anderson Silva versus Forrest Griffin, but as UFC 99 approaches, Anderson Silva has been helping to train Rich Franklin for his bout against Vandalay Silva at the 195-pound catchweight division. Franklin has announced that his newfound partnership with the UFC middleweight champion has prompted him to remain at the light heavyweight division after his fight with Juan. And... Strikeforce has made another exciting announcement for their June 6 card. Former UFC heavyweight champion Kevin Randleman will debut for the California-based promotion as he takes on affliction veteran Mike Whitehead. Up next, I'll talk to Forrest Griffin on the phone. Joining us here on MMA Fix via phone, former UFC light heavyweight champion Forrest Griffin, who has a huge fight coming up with Anderson the Spider Silva at UFC 101 in August. Forrest, thank you very much for joining us here on MMA Fix. How are you today? I'm good, man. Good. Glad to hear it. I've been following you on Twitter, actually, and I noticed yesterday you finally posted an update saying that you were out at some photo shoot. Have you been super busy recently? Wait, what's Twitter? Wait, is that not really Forrest Griffin on Twitter? No, man. I'm most definitely not on Twitter. I'm not come on Twitter. Me? Really? Forrest, let's talk about your training, obviously. Anderson Silva, huge fight for you at UFC 101. How's that going for you? I'm, well, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm doing the best I can. I don't know what that's supposed to mean, but, you know, um, it's different. You know, getting ready for Southpaw, getting ready for the best guy in the world. A little, I mean, it's intimidating, but not to the point where you freeze up and shut down, you know. So, i going to work hard and do all that good stuff I always do, so. Well, a lot of people are talking about the surprise of the matchup with you and Anderson Silva at UFC 101. Tell us about the moment that that call came down from Joe Silva. Were you surprised also, or were you just instantly like, yes, give me that fight? Well, you know, I, I felt like while I did everything I could to get ready for my last fight, I didn't do it kind of passionately. I, I felt like I was kind of almost a little going through the motions and training for my last fight. And, and when, I, when I heard the opportunity to fight him came up, I, I kind of thought to myself that, that, that's an opportunity to kind of make amends and, and be a little tougher, you know, and kind of, you know, you fight the best guy in the world, you really don't have that much to lose, you know, and um, the thing is, it's, it's an opportunity for me to come in with a much stronger mindset, if that makes any sense, almost a way to atone for my lack of passion in my last uh, training. Let's talk about the actual fight. Do you expect this to be a stand-up war? Do you expect it to go to the ground? And where do you prefer it? Well, I mean, I, I don't know what his plan is, but I think a lot of people have kind of criticized him a lot. So I, I think he's going to come out and be a little more aggressive than he's ever been before, if that makes sense. Not that he's ever been before, but, but then he's been, you know, recently. And I think that's because he's been criticized a lot, you know, and I think he wants that big, you know, beat the hell out of somebody performance. Well, this time I don't think he's going to have the luxury of pawing around and being disrespectful because you have the skill set to pressure him no matter where the fight goes. Yeah, I think that's that's why I came up. Is they're like, oh, it's Forrest Griffin. He'll he'll make it a fight. And I did just use my full name again. Damn it. Did you feel disrespected by Rampage Jackson when he said he had watched the fight back and he thought he had beat you? Uh, no, man. I you know it is what it is. You know that's that's what he does. That's fine. Um, I don't know. He's been kind of mean to me since then too. You know, and I, 
the thing is, is I don't know, like, I've never seen somebody so mad at another person because they had an off night. You know, what are you mad at me for? I, what did I do? I just showed up and tried, you know? I uh, I didn't judge the fight. I thought I won, but, I mean, you know, what, it's weird. It's like, I, it's not like I said I wouldn't fight him again. I said immediately, oh, I'll fight him again, whatever he has, you know. That, that wasn't, I didn't choose the matchup. So is there bad blood between you and Rampage Jackson now? I, you know, I, I don't know. I saw him. I saw him at some fights, and um, you know, we definitely we don't we don't talk. So, Forrest, I want to give you an opportunity here to plug your new book because you wrote a book, and it doesn't seem like a very Forrest Griffin thing to do to sit down and, and pen a book. But tell us about it. It's uh, it actually is chock full of grammatical errors. <laughs> There's actual sentences that don't really make any sense, and sort I'm of like. I know what I mean, but nobody that reads the book is going to know what I mean. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'll tell you what. Just go pick it up. Look at the cover. If you're amused, um, then sit there and, and skim through it in the, uh, you know, in your in your little Barnes & Noble or Borders. And then uh, don't actually buy it, though. It's a waste of money. Very good. Forrest, thank you very much for joining us on the show today. An exclusive interview with Forrest Griffin, who's fighting Anderson Silva at UFC 101. Thanks for talking to us today here on MMA. This June, Super Channel Fight brings you cage action like you've never seen before. With Showtime Strike Force MMA. Plus Showtime Championship Boxing, Showbox, The New Generation, and Hennessy Sports Bouts. Details at superchannel.ca. Only on Super Channel Fight. RawVegas.tv and the Fight Network. You're watching MMA Fix. My name is Dave Farah at the May 2009 Grappler's Quest, which actually is a charity event this time. It benefits autism. We're going to have a chance to catch up with Mark Lehman from Koba Kai and one of the fighters from his stable, Jake Rochalt, who has a very exciting fight coming up at UFC 102. Grappler's Quest 2009 is underway, and Mark Lehman is here. When I first walked in today, I didn't see you here, but this is like your event pretty much, right? Uh, yeah, we usually have some guys that do pretty good. They get lucky a lot, but they train hard, so... And justifies the means, I guess. Let's talk about some of your boys. Jake Rochal obviously had kind of a tough fight last time in the UFC. Tell me what your thoughts are on where he stands right now and what he's getting ready for next. Uh, Jake's going to be fighting Chris Lieben. I think it's UFC 102 in Portland, Oregon. And uh, he's just getting ready for that, focusing on that. And uh, we'll see him fight there. Johnny Hendricks is going to be fighting August 2nd in UFC 101 in Philadelphia. And he's going to be fighting Amir Sadala, which should be a real good match. And then hopefully Shane will be fighting in the very near future also. I just heard some pretty exciting news about you. You got a big fight coming up. Yeah, I have a real big fight coming up. I'm excited about it. Where the hell did that come from? Uh, from the UFC. <laughs> Chris Lieben at UFC 102, and that's a big fight, not only for you, but also for Chris, because he's coming off some controversy. What do you think about all the steroid stuff? Uh, I don't really 
care either way. It doesn't matter to me. It's going to be a great fight. It will be an exciting fight. It's a good fight for both of us. Your last fight in the UFC, a little bit of a disappointment for you, I'm sure. What happened? I just got caught in a guillotine, got choked. You know, it's just, it sucks, but it's just one of those things that happens, and uh, hopefully I've all learned from it and, and move on and, and get better from it. What have you learned from that? What are you going to change in this next fight so that doesn't happen again? Uh, you know, I, I think in one, one respect I just kind of panicked a little bit and let things get a little bit deeper than I should have and, and should have been fighting it off a little bit earlier, and, and I didn't. And hopefully I learned that and, and uh, can, can make some improvements from that going into my next fight. The Jake Rochelle fight, I didn't even know he was fighting Chris Lieben. How did that fight come down and when? Yeah, uh, Joe Silva said, here's the opponent that we got for you. You know, do you want him? And the team takedown managers never say no to anybody. So they said, yeah, we'll take the fight. And then they just had to get Lieben to agree to it. And now it's a signed fight for UFC 102. Is that a must win for him? I think every fight's a must win. You know, it's a, every, every fight's your toughest fight and you can't lose. And, but I think Jake will do good. I think it's stylistically it's a good matchup. And uh, Lieben's a big name. And uh, I think Jake can uh, show the world what he's got. Do you feel like you've really been improving a lot since your last fight even? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm in the gym training, you know, every day, twice a day. So I'm just trying to get better all the time, you know, trying to improve, trying to get ready for this next fight, you know. What's one thing that you've been working on the most? Um, yeah, I mean, I've got a lot of work to do uh, as far as as far as fighting a southpaw. I never fought a southpaw, so I, I spend a lot of time right now kind of focusing on that and, and uh, getting getting used to that and getting comfortable to, for that. Okay, you get past Lieben. Who's in your sights? I mean, who do you want to fight? You know, I don't, I'm not really looking that far ahead. I'm looking for this fight, and I'm looking to win this fight and, and dominate this fight. So that's all I care about right now. After that, it doesn't matter whoever they want to throw at me. When you square off with Lieben, will you just whisper to him that the cornrows look stupid? For, will you do that for me, please? <laughs> uh, you know, I can't promise that. Affliction, full contact fighter, sinister, tap out, Fairtex, warrior wear, and t-shirts from the Fight Network. MMA Fight Shop is proud to present Canada's largest and most complete MMA online superstore. A website designed for MMA fans where your hard to find gear and apparel is only one click away. Where the fighters and fans shop, MMAFightShop.ca. for UFC 98 betting odds with Steve Cofield, a.k.a. Cage Rider. You're very popular. You're very famous online. <laughs> Yahoo Sports, you're writing there, and CageRider.com, of course, has excellent analysis when it comes to all of the big fights. But let's talk about the main event mm -hmm. for UFC 98. This is exciting. Two undefeated guys, uh, Rashad Evans and Lyoto Machida. They're stepping into the cage on May 23rd. What do you think about the matchup? Great fight, and you can kind of feel the energy building. I think uh, this was kind of a letdown originally because people were predicting that it was going to be Evans and Jackson. Now Quentin Jackson's injured. Listen, Lyoto Machida is unbeaten. You know, there's certainly a reason behind it. He's a confusing guy. He's a strong dude. He's pretty well-rounded, and he's still kind of a mystery, as is Rashad Evans to a certain extent, which is amazing because he's coming off, you know, huge wins, uh, huge stoppages of Forrest Griffin and Chuck Liddell. But I think a lot of people out there are still like, are these guys really the best 205s even though they're unbeaten? Do you think that Rashad's going to be able to effectively game plan so he can attack him and be effective when he actually gets inside? I think he will. I think he has solved just about every guy he's fought in the past. Um, he's great in terms of movement. Let's look at the actual odds. Machida is minus 190, Evans plus 160. And for people who don't do a lot of betting mm -hmm. on MMA, could you explain that real quickly before we get into those odds? Absolutely. Uh, minus 190, you're going to have to bet $190 to win 100. You're going to get 290 total if Machida wins. So it's 19 to win 10, you know, 38 to win 20. On the other side, whatever the plus is, you bet 100, you actually get that 100 back plus the number. So it's plus 160. So you're going to get a total of 160. So those numbers, I think for a lot of people, when they were released, it was basically like two to one minus 200. were a little bit shocking. You've got the champion who's almost a two to one dog. Okay. Let's make the official picks right now. What do you think? Rashad Evans or Lyoto Machida? You know what? I'm going to go with the value on this one. We talk about value all the time. And th that's a long run philosophy because the more of these fights you bet, uh, if you stick to your game plan, I think you're going to win by picking the good spots. So I think this is a good spot. 
I think it's more of a 50-50 fight than you know a two to one favorite fight. So I think Rashad's going to come up with a good game plan. Okay, I'm going to have to agree, and I do that very cautiously because right. after uh, Leona's last fight, I said I'm never betting against that guy. Oh, again. it's scary. There's no doubt. I mean, he could go in there and, yeah. and smash Evans, and then all of a sudden, you know, all your dreams of the value are gone. But I think that there is value in Rashad Evans. So I'd say if you're going to bet this fight, Rashad Evans is probably the way to go. It's going to be an exciting one. May 23rd is the date. This has been UFC 98 Betting Odds with our resident expert, Cage Rider, a.k.a. Steve Cofield. Thanks for joining us in studio. Thanks for having me. This is the MMA Fix on the Fight Network. Welcome back to the MMA Show. Is it time to recalibrate the weight class? Now it is time to go inside the fighter's mind. (laughs) In a world that shows no mercy, when there's no second chance, there is now a new way to get total domination over the competition. Behold the power of high voltage. Undisputed. Available now. Rated T for Teen. I sat down with Heath Herring this week in his sick house to talk about his upcoming fight with Cain Velasquez at UFC 99, his loss to Brock Lesnar, and to get a tour of his home. It's worth it to watch for the house tour alone. Check it out. For the MMA Fix and the Fight Network, my name is Dave Farah in the crazy-ass house of the Texas Crazy Horse, Heath Herring, how you doing, man? I'm doing great, Dave. How about yourself? I'm good. First things first, explain the decor of the house, because I've never seen anything like this I don't before. know. It's, uh, I think it's been described best as, like, if Willy Wonka came to Las Vegas, this is the house that he'd live in. Okay, see, when I walked in, I immediately <laughs> thought porn set. Really? May- maybe not the case, but, I mean, we are in Las Vegas. <laughs> if you ever need some extra cash, have you thought about renting it out? I don't know. There's no John, John Holmes upstairs, but, you know, me, I guess that's the next, next best thing. Next best thing, sure. <laughs> Let's talk about what's going on in the world of the Texas Crazy Horse. you got a big fight coming up, UFC 99, Cain Velasquez. This guy's uh-huh. highly touted. Everyone's yes. saying he's the next big thing. What do you want to do to this guy? Well, I mean, we're just uh, right now we're just going to go out and, and to uh, Germany. It's going to be, I'm really excited. It's going to be the first UFC actually in Germany. Right. So I think the fans are, are really looking forward to seeing um, American-style MMA. They're, they're used to seeing uh, K1 and Pride in Europe. So... Looking to go over there and have a great show. Uh, they they don't. I know they're not really a ground uh, friendly audience, so we're looking to give them a stand up fight, and then that's what we're looking to do. This is a big fight for you. The, mm-hmm. uh, the the heavyweight division is now pretty stacked in the UFC, right, right. and a lot of people are saying, you know, this is a must win fight for both Absolutely. of you guys to Absolutely. continue on the path that you want to be on. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about this fight for you specifically and why it's so important that you mm-hmm. win this fight. Every fight nowadays is important. It seems that. Uh, you know, the next one, you got to win this one, you got to win the next one. It's, it's just always the way it, it seems like you're dog chasing its tail always, unfortunately. Uh, maybe I'm just getting jaded at this age. Do you worry that if you don't win this fight that the UFC may come to you and go, well, we don't have anything else well, to do Well, no, I mean, that's always a, that's always a, a chance with the UFC. And, you know, with, my, with me, fortunately, I can probably go to different places. I can go back to Japan or I can go to Affliction or something like that. But um, that's not what we want to do. We don't want to go out on a losing note by any means. So we're going to just start with the living room? You or? tell me, man. What's exciting about your house? I don't know what's not exciting no about kidding. it. I got my poker trophy over here. You actually won that? No, I just beat up the guy with who actually won that. <laughs> stole his trophy from him. Think you could. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the bar. We only use this after the fight, of course. What's your drink of choice? The drink of choice is the vodka. Looks like you, you've been drinking some of the Maker's Mark there. Absinthe. For those of you that don't know, Absinthe will wreck your world. It really will. Getting ready for UFC 99. Where are you training here in Las mm-hmm. Vegas, and who are you training with? Well, I've been training down at uh, Vanderlei's gym a lot with Vanderlei and over at uh, the Warrior Training Center. Now, tell everyone why there's the split. Why would you spend some time at Warrior and some time down at Vanderlei's gym? Well, Vanderlei's, we go down a lot more for the, um, for, for, to work with, work with other guys. When we go into Warrior, it's usually just a one-on-one session. We do a lot of just work on certain techniques, um, kind of do a little bit of polishing up process. Do you have any favorite guys that, that people would recognize that maybe are watching this show that you'd like to get in there and spar with because they really bring the heat or are great ground fighters? That well, yeah, I mean, pretty much everybody at Vanderlei's is, is really good like that. We've got a big group of guys on there. 
Um, good heavyweights, you know, Vanderlei, of course, it's crazy. Mike Whitehead, all those guys are down there. So we've got a good core core group of guys to train with. And then we have, and then we, when we go to Warrior, we usually do a one-on-one session. Um, you know, just me and Marco working on our techniques, polishing up drills, like I said. And Mike Whitehead loves to talk about how he just punches you in the face every <laughs> chance he gets. <laughs> it seems like some of those sparring sessions get pretty heated, right? <laughs> yeah, I think that's what he, uh, he definitely tries that. But it's fun. <laughs> Look at this. Is this a, it's a hot tub with kind of the Tuscan thing going on back here. Okay, be honest with me. Do you actually spend any time in the hot tub at all? No, no. Okay, honestly, no, not so much. More, more in the back. I come back here to sleep a lot in the afternoons. It's pretty nice. Nice. You got the whole outdoor kitchen thing going on, including a popcorn maker? Yeah, I got the popcorn machine. Has this thing ever actually been on since the Texas Crazy Horse has been in this house? Not that I know of. Well, after you beat Cain Velasquez, we'll have a popcorn celebration. There you go. Do you know how to make popcorn, Dave? Do you I mean, start I, the I movie theater? Learn. I mean, no, I can, you can put learn. it in the microwave and then Yeah, YouTube. Put it in you can YouTube, like, how to make popcorn? <laughs> sure. Here's, a, here's our boom box that we always listen to 106.7 on. <laughs> it actually, does it have little teeny speakers here? Yeah. <laughs> Your fight with Brock Lesnar was obviously a tough fight. As a friend of yours, it was tough for me to watch, man, because he, he just kind of laid on you for 15 right, minutes. Right, and right. I thought he was pretty disrespectful throughout that fight. Absolutely. Uh, just with pushing you in the back and then the rodeo ride at the end. I didn't like any of that stuff. But that being said, mm -hmm. take us through the fight from your perspective. Well, I mean, really, come right out and get caught with that overhand right. I didn't even see it, didn't expect it at all. And then it, you're just really fighting from a handicap at that point. It was real disappointing, of course, obviously, coming out there, not getting able to do what I want to do and getting handicapped right away, not being able to fight a fight. You know, it's hard. You go in a fight, and uh, you're pretty much blinded right off the beginning. So you just try to go out there and, and do the best you can. And uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to get a win. He, you know, he really didn't do a whole lot either, other than, like you said, kind of lay on me and kind of act like a jackass a little bit. But... That's uh, unfortunately that's part of it, and that's what we get paid to do, I guess. Brock Lesnar obviously transitioning over from the WWE has had some of that, uh, well, growing pains, if you will, when it comes to <laughs> being accepted by MMA fans just in general, mm -hmm. because you know he's he's an abrasive guy and he has that outdoor. Well, personality. that's kind of what I said. I, I said, you know, what do you expect? You kind of bring a pro wrestler over. I think that's kind of his shtick, so you know, so to speak. So maybe that's what he was trying to do, play it for the crowd. Do you think that he's gotten more respectful? It seemed like in the Couture fight, he took that seriously and he showed sure, respect sure. to Randy. Well, and, and that's and really that's what I always say too. I mean, this is this is a sport first and foremost. You know what I mean? It's not a fight. I'm friends with almost all the guys I've always fought. Me and Noguera, we're buddies. We go out sometimes together. Um, Fedor, all the guys in Pride, we used to all be buddies and hang out together. So I don't ever have any animosity usually with the guys that I fight at all. To be honest with you. If the UFC were to come to you and say, "Okay, we want you to fight Brock Lesnar mm -hmm. again," would you accept that fight? And if you were to accept it, what would you change? Well, first of all, you're going to win this next fight to even get offered to do anything like that. Um, it would be great. It would be. I'd like to fight him now. Obviously, he's got the belt, so that'd be great. Sure. But uh, yeah, would I change? I'd go out and get hit right away. That would right. be the number one thing, obviously. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's something that we can only talk about after we win this next fight and see where it goes from there. Now we're going to go in kind of the uh, the hookah room, as they call it. This is more for like when there's no fight training going on. Kind of hang, come in, hang out, light up the hookah. It's a fun little room. I usually like to sit over here at the table, play some cards or whatever. Does yeah. the Texas Crazy Horse play a lot of Texas Hold'em? I do, I do. I like I like the poker a little bit. It's kind of a small uh, card table. Yeah, it's pretty fun though. It's fun little, uh, little fun little games over here you can play. You know, Las Vegas is kind of notorious for having like big cash games. Do you ever sit down and mix no, it up with the big boys? No, no. What's the biggest cash game you've ever played? <coughs> I think like five ten. Okay, I'm not stupid. Do you win a lot of money when you play? I do general? okay. I do okay. I do okay. Okay, well, let's nothing, continue nothing, with the, uh, the tour. Believe me, it ain't paying the bills. While we're walking to our next destination, why don't you tell us about uh, your thoughts with uh, Frank Mir and Brock Lesnar? Oh, I, I hope Frank, uh, I think Frank's looking good for the fight. I think he's training and getting ready. You think that Frank uh, is going to win the fight? I hope so. I think so. I mean, Frank, Frank feels good. I talked to him about it, so uh, he feels uh, confident. I think that's important for Frank. He looks in pretty good shape, though. Yeah, I mean, we saw Frank absolutely. for a couple of fights yeah. there where you could tell he was still... Taking his training seriously, but not as seriously as he could be. But right now, he's he's pretty cut up. Absolutely, for absolutely. A big guy. So I'm I'm impressed. I hope it will, I hope it goes well for him. Now, for a while there, uh, Frank I think said that he wouldn't train with you or, or didn't train with you. Is that a disadvantage for him? Uh, I don't know. I haven't really talked to him about it. No real invitations, but I don't know. We haven't seen what's happened. So. You said you're a betting man, but do you find it odd that Frank actually beat Brock last time, and yet he's still the underdog in the sports books? Yeah, that's a little bit crazy. A little bit weird. You the think, sport's crazy. You, you never think, know. Do you think Brock still has a lot to learn when it comes to MMA? Uh, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I still have a lot to learn when it comes to MMA. I've been doing it 13 years, so what, you know, what the hell do I know? <laughs> Let's keep walking, man. Let's okay, check out some more of the house. All right. Apparently, he's got a crazy bedroom. Uh, what do you think about Shane Carwin? Because Shane's been looking good. Yeah, the Shane Gonzaga looked really fight. good last time. Yeah, he did. 
Uh, Gonzaga came out really, really strong against him, and I think Shane, you know, did a good job of getting back to his feet and caught him with that real short right hand. Do you think that Shane Carlin is potentially a heavyweight contender? Do you think he should get a title shot soon? <laughs> I don't know. Who thinks? Who knows what happens? UFC does what they want to do. You know, they say this fight's going to be a title shot, and then you never know. But yeah, he, he looked great. He looked great in his last fight, and I think he's a good fighter. Absolutely. This, sir, is in fact a crazy masturbator. <laughs> How could the ladies resist this, man? The you got a whole it. oasis with a hot tub. You got the dry sauna. Oh, wow, sauna? And this is a steam shower, right? Steam shower. A lot of people can fit in here. We got the Italian murals on the wall. Of course, using the fight hair gel, FYT, FYT.com. Check it out. It's great stuff. Yeah. I think uh, a few people in here. I'm gonna no, get out no, of your no, shower, no, 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 not two guys. No, 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 not normally. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, uh, one last thing. UFC 98. Uh, some very exciting fights on this card. It is. It Tell is. us who you're mo most excited to see in UFC 98. Well, I think the, I think the main event's going to be good with Rashad and uh, Lyoto. So I'm kind of excited to see how that's going to play out. I really don't know how to call that one. I know you hate predicting fights, but mm -hmm. do you think that Rashad is going to be able to effectively attack Lyoto Machida, unlike anyone else has really been able to? I don't know, man. Lyoto, uh, he's an interesting cat, that's for sure. So... I don't know. We'll see how, what happens. I think, I mean, Rashad, he always, you, you can't ever bet against the guy. He always comes out and seems to win, and, and Lyoto's one of those cat of nine lives as well. So I don't know what's going to happen. Once again, it's talking about creepy. odds, it's, it seems weird to me that Rashad has never lost a fight outside of the, the no contest with Tito Ortiz. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's never had any negative marks against him, and yet he's still an underdog going into this fight right, against right. Lyoto Machida. So Lyoto's sort of got this mystique about him. I wonder if Rashad will be able to crack it. Well, he's a southpaw, and he's kind of tricky. He does, he does a lot of weird things, but... Uh, I don't know. We'll find out. We'll, we'll see what happens. You gonna go to the fight? Uh, I don't know. We might still be here. I don't know uh, what our what our travel schedule is gonna be just yet. So we're still trying to figure it out. Tell you what, man. Thank you very much for inviting us into your home today. Oh no man, thanks, Dave. Giving us My the pleasure. grand tour, the Texas Crazy Horse, Heath Herring. I'm Dave Fair for the MMA Fix. Thanks for watching. Undisputed. Coming soon. Rated T for Teen. Hi, I'm Amber Nicole, and you're at the MMA Fix photo shoot at the Warrior Training Center while Mad Alex is doing the shooting. Hey guys, it's Madison Alexander with MadAlexPhotography.com. We're in the house today with MMAFix.com, and I'm all here to catch it on camera. Never would I imagine I'd be a strung out heroin crackhead sitting here in the Warrior Center for the new MMA Fix site. So yeah, hopefully I won't be too strung out and hopefully you'll see me on some more red carpets. I hope this doesn't make me relapse. Thanks for joining us on this episode of MMA Fix. Join us next week when we have special guest Ariane Celeste recapping our news and announcing all the highlights from UFC 98. I'm Dave Farah from RawVegas.tv and The Fight Network. Have a good night, and we'll see you here next week.